Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Ali Moreno with us here in the studio. We also welcome Shaka Hislop and Frank LaBeouf. Now on yesterday's Extra Time, we were talking about Michael Owen being on The Masked Singer. And of course, we've got one of our own. It was on the French version. And Frank, it was quite interesting. And you were saying that when you were filming it, sec like secrecy was very much top priority in that you couldn't even go to the bathroom on your own. No, no, we had uh, each of us a uh, bodyguard. Even to go to the studio, we had to park like a, a mile away from the, the studio because of the paparazzis and because one, people wanted to know some secrets. secrets and, uh, and so we had uh, doubles as well, you know, people wow. to go into the car, Fabian like Bartes. three cars, <laughs> and uh, to make sure that, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Because we, we were wearing a kind of uh, something to, to make sure nobody can recognize us. And uh, we were in, stuck in a room from 1, I would say, p.m. to uh, midnight uh, for the old show. And we couldn't get out of the, of the uh, gotten out of the, uh, of the room. Uh, we didn't see the others because it was impossible to talk to each other. Um, and we, uh, we had to go, to, uh, we had to go, to go through the, the bodyguards to ask if we wanted to go somewhere. Especially if we wanted to go to the, to the restroom, so it, wow. it, it was fun for five minutes, but got a little bit boring. Uh, but you, you, were, you were saying before you got, what, 200,000 euros for doing it, Frank? What? So, you know, it's worth what? it, worth it in the end. What? <laughs> never, never. You're just a liar. <laughs> what? More than that. More than More that. More than that, exactly. That's what it's about. Uh, Shaka, would you do the Trinidad and Tobago version? Oh, man. Sure. Yeah, Shaq, of course. Yeah. I've got, yeah. I've got quite a voice on me, Dan. Uh -huh. Got quite a singing uh -huh. voice. Shaq would do it for a free flight. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, he would. And but the question is, how do you keep Shaka hidden in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, that's, well, I tell you what, he has some stealth <laughs> ways about him. Well, he does. Yeah. Internationally. <laughs> yes. But in, in Trinidad and Tobago, he is very well known. So Frank, you couldn't tell anybody. Or just, you obviously told your wife, or no. she'd be thinking you're having an affair or something. Uh, I, Coming I, I, home with yeah, ostrich feathers. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't say to my wife, yeah, I, I have to leave and not and just come back at midnight. It would have been a problem, you know. But uh, I, I didn't say anything to, uh, to my kids, uh, uh, neither to my mother, no, nobody. I said, no, uh, I said to nobody, it was in a contract. And uh, you know what, the worst for me, I couldn't talk. Oh, it no. was forbidden for us to talk. Wow. So we had to write things down and say, well, I want some coffee. Can I go to the restroom? So, and, and Craig Burley oh. will tell you, to all of you, that it was impossible for me to not talk for yeah. like five minutes. Wow. But I had to, uh, <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to do that <laughs> for tw 11 hours. Still. Uh, that was quite a nightmare. <laughs> it was worth the half a million. Uh -huh. uh, okay, <laughs> Ali, assuming that Ecuador finishes third, <laughs> <laughs> what? who is going to grab the fourth spot in Commonwealth World Cup qualifying? Mm, so currently, it's tight, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very tight. Currently, Peru is in that position, one point ahead of Uruguay. Now is when you have to look at the schedule. Who does Uruguay play next? Venezuela. Oh, well, that's three points in the bag. Correct. I'm going to go with you on that. Yes. I'm going to follow you with that. And, uh, and then Peru plays Ecuador at home. Let's assume that Peru also gets three points. Yeah. Okay. That means then in their next match, who is it against? Against Uruguay in Uruguay. Ooh, I know. Ooh. So at that point, you have to figure out that, okay, Uruguay maybe, they're the ones that get into that fourth position. But you also have teams from behind that can yeah. also get a couple of wins here and there. And so while Peru and Uruguay are concerned about each other, then you start talking about maybe Chile getting on a run. We'll see. It's still tight, but I'm going to say Uruguay. Shaka's here as well. How are you, Shaka? Any goats in the house? Oh. No. No, no, uh, uh, only one kid here, so it's relatively quiet. Oh, lovely. Um, are the additions of Kulusevski <laughs> and Bentoncourt enough for Spurs to become favourites for top four over Arsenal Manchester United, Shaka? Um, I think it moves them in the right direction, but I'm still, I, I still feel Manchester United have a better squad. It's just if if they if Rania can figure things out tactically for, for United, they should finish fourth. Even with those even with those two two additions for Spurs, but Spurs right now are, are playing the better football. Um, and and well, even before these signings, I, I felt that they. I favor them just over the other two. 
Frank, which manager would you love to play for? Klopp, Pep or Thomas Tuchel? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, I think I would love to go first with Klopp because, I don't know, it's kind of, just kind of feeling, you know. Mm. Um, just because because of the feeling, you know, what the, the way that he he, go, he talks to the to the players, the way he goes with the, the way he moves around the players makes me think that uh, he's maybe the more uh, social uh, coach uh, ever seen. And uh, all, all the three of uh, of the player the, the coaches you, you mentioned, I think it's it would be my favorite. But the two others, I know Pep Guardiola because I was in Qatar with him and we had some nice discussions. Uh, but I think he likes to take a little bit of distance between him and the players, but even if he, he got a little bit closer. Uh, and Tuchel is, is brand new. He's, uh, he can be tough, he can be nice, but I don't know where to stand with him still. 100% so club. 100% club. Yes. You know why? Why? Because Guardiola wouldn't play me. Uh, I'm a center forward. Yeah. He doesn't play with a striker. No. I'd be sitting on no, the bench. The question does uh, say, in parentheses, you're starting every game. Yeah, well... According to whom? According to... Nick was ah, a question maker. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. Who was better at golf, you or Pep, when you played, Frank? Mm. Uh, at the time, I guess was me, mm. but I, uh, I think now it's definitely him because I don't play golf anymore. Oh. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I think, he, I, think, I think he improved very well. He's, he's very professional, you know. I used to play with him and... Uh, did and you play yeah, for money? How much Gabriel, money did you play for? Tuta, no, 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 no. We never play with for, for money. We just played for the sake of it. It was Spain against France, and uh, Batistuta was with us, or Argentina was uh, also included. So it was a uh, the nice World Cup of poor golfers. Yeah, what a, <laughs> what a round that is. So that <laughs> lot. That's much better than the rounds we have. <laughs> Scotland, Venezuela, and Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Shaka, we're, we're still getting a lot of correspondence about this. Did Shaka get a writer's credit on the Neymar documentary? My man is featured prominently as the voice of the negative press. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting on my on my uh, royalties from Neymar and company. Yeah, I've Shaka. not gotten a penny yet. Got a whole documentary around you. Uh, who do you think has been the biggest the flop? The checks of the post, I was told. Yeah, yeah, there's been the biggest flop between the three mm. big money signings. Lukaku, Grealish, Sancho. Oh. Well, I'm going to say... 100% Sancho. Mm, <laughs> well, I'm going to say in terms of expectations and what this player was supposed to be for this club and what he had done with his career prior to coming to this club, I'm going to say, Lukaku! Lukaku. Yeah. yeah. Look, he had done much more in his career than Sancho ever did coming into uh, this new role with Chelsea. And he was supposed to be the guy that then not only... Think of what Chelsea was even before Lukaku came. So Lukaku was only going to be the guy that, man, now we have the goal score. No longer depending on Kai Havers or Timo Werner. Now we got it all figured out. Yeah, We're winning everything. Mm, maybe not. Uh, Shaka, who is your fave? Oh, sorry. I've missed the question. Oh. For Ali, with Argentina continuing their unbeaten run without Messi, how far do you see them going in the World Cup? Not quite sure what the relationship is we're trying to establish between Argentina not losing without Messi and their success in the World Cup. If Argentina is going to win the World Cup or have a chance at it, Messi, Messi is going to have to be on the field. Right. Simple as so that. So how far are they going to go? With, with or without? With Messi. They have an opportunity to win it. They're going to win it? They have an opportunity to win it. Well, everyone's got opportunities. Well, no. <laughs> Venezuela doesn't have an well, opportunity that's very to win it. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> neither. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> Shaka, who... Even less of an opportunity than Venezuela. <laughs> who, Shaka, is your favourite non-footballing athlete? Ooh. Ah. You said Bolt. Yes. Who not only is an amazing athlete, but also winds Craig up. <laughs> what more could you want in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Just by That's showing right. up. Just by That's being right. a favorite athlete. <laughs> by being in the same building. Uh, what about you, Frank? Who's your, who's your favorite non-footballing athlete? Oh, wow, wow, that's a tough question. Um, 
Nadal for sure. Nadal? I would go for I would go for no I would I would go for Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods? Mm. He changed the world of uh, yeah, I would ch he changed the world of golf. You you have to be an athlete now to be a good golfer. Uh, where before we saw some f uh, you know very soft tummies around the <laughs> greens, you know. I'm saying some professionals, I would say. <laughs> I would say Tiger Woods, but since Frank has mentioned Tiger Woods, yeah. shout out to Emmett Smith, running back for the Dallas Cowboys in the glory days. There you go. Mm -hmm. They were quite a long way, oh, <laughs> a long yes, time yes. ago, yeah, these days. The glory days are not quite what they uh, used was, to be. Was there any ever transfer move for you that fell through, and why did it fall through, Frank? Um, I almost signed for Real Madrid in 99, I think it was. Uh, they wanted me and um, and uh, like uh, uh, like the year before with Liverpool, I was so pleased at Chelsea that I didn't try to leave the club. So I didn't push for anything and in fact the club asked for crazy money and I was already over 30. Uh, and uh, I think it was too much money for the club uh, uh, who wanted me. And on top of it, uh, I, I think I made a good choice. It, it was John Toshak, the coach of Real Madrid, right. and uh, he wanted to get rid of uh, uh, it was Hierro and uh, Sanchez. I think no Sanchez. That's in Sanchez. I think it was mm -hmm. at the time. And I think it was a bit a bad idea for me to play alongside Hierro because we are almost same defenders and uh, not tough enough, um, good with the ball, but not tough enough as the central defender. So it would have been a mistake for me to we go there. But it was nice to, uh, to be asked for from them, yeah, but bad, I didn't it? push yeah. it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 OK. Frank, what do you think of the Dembele rumours to PSG? We discussed this on the show with Jules, and we were all kind of scratching our heads about it a bit. Yeah, I, I do too. I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not sure it can, it can be true. I mean, if Dembele has to prove to all the world that he can do at least one full season with consistency. He used, to do the, he used to do that when he was playing for Dortmund, but we don't know where Dembele is and what his level is. So it would, it would be a mistake. Well, it would be a gamble. Let's say it would be a, a big gamble from PSG to think that then Dembele can be somebody who can bring something for at least a year. I have doubts. Uh, Shaka, in today's inflated transfer market, what do you think the highest price a team would pay for you would be? Ooh. Wow. Wow. Mm -mm. Don't, watch, oh, don't, don't look at Shaka me. with his feet. Mm -mm. Let, let's no, let's no, pretend no, 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 no. no one's paying 100 that. million. No, no one's paying that. Ignore that. Now, you were the most expensive <laughs> goalkeeper. What was it? What was it? Most, one shot? Is that right? British transfer. British tra goalkeeper and transfer. How much Back did they? Pay? How much was that? That was when I joined Newcastle in '95. How much and did they I, pay for you? And then I went to th three free transfers after that. <laughs> <laughs> one well, one transfer, three free transfers. <laughs> how much was that transfer, Shaq? It was 1.5 million pounds, Some, somewhere on that. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a mm -hmm. lot of Maseratis uh -huh. right there. There it is. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't get a penny of that, Dan. What do you Stop trying to. What do you mean to get a penny? Surely you suggest. had a signing on bonus. <laughs> Sack your agent if that's the case, Jack. Um, I got, I got a small sign on bonus. Yeah. <laughs> It's no Mars Singer fire. money, but it's all right. No, it'll, no, do. All right. it'll do. It'll do. We, yeah, yeah, we all have our levels. Definitely not Mars Singer money. <laughs> um, Dan, what mm -hmm. is the first opulent thing you bought when you went for Real Madrid? Did you also <laughs> buy a yacht like Shaka? <laughs> yes. Yes. Which he keeps, which he keeps at Trinidad and Tobago, by I the way. I did not have a yacht. Uh, I heard that I story that Shaka bought a yacht. yacht. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. I never did. It says Shaq number yeah. one. Man. Yeah, and the back. I made no money. I think I was on 
like 25,000 a year. Uh -huh. That was the offer they gave me. Yeah. And then I was like, right, I still need to fly back every month to see my son. Uh -huh. Can we put that? And they're like, yeah. And they were like, do you want us to pay for those flights? I was like, no, don't worry about it. I was like, what are you doing, Daniel? <laughs> no negotiation skills whatsoever. <laughs> I had to teach English to supplement my income. Well, that was it. Clearly, you did not learn Spanish. No, exactly. I was too busy working. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a money. <laughs> Uh, final question. What do the players who didn't get a call for international duty do during the break? Mm. Well, you all got international duty. Yeah. And we saw Mount was in Miami, wasn't it? An NBA game. I saw that. And you just faff around a bit. Usually, you'll get a couple of days off because yeah. you don't have enough people around to have quality training sessions. And then you kind of ease your, back way, your, your, your way back into things. But fortunately, I wasn't around for a lot of that. No, all yeah. of you were, you were on international duty as well, boys, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, when I studied my career, yeah. when I studied my career, when I was in, with the national team, why you, you train? You, you have the weekend off, but otherwise you train. And you train even harder uh, to make sure you're going to be fit for the next game. So oh, shut up. You boring. don't train that so hard. You can't train that team. hard, Frank. No one's there. <laughs> Yeah, you train hard. You, you have to. Yeah, you have to run. You do the physical. You. It's boring. No, yeah, no, I, no I don't like it. I, I, I like to be, Real Madrid I, I love international to be an duty. You had like player. no one there. It was just the dregs of the squad, basically. Mm -hmm. No one did anything. They just faffed around five minutes, went home. Can you imagine Shaka on international duty? Once he did not go with Trinidad and Tobago, and he was just staying back. What he was doing? You think he was training hard? Hey, he was still going to Trinidad and Tobago somehow. Yeah, no, was still, <laughs> yeah. I trained very hard. <laughs> he was still making I sure. I did that for quite a few years at Newcastle, mind you. Uh, there wasn't quite the internet access then, was it? Mm -hmm. He could just tell them he'd been called up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goes, oh. a, no, no, trust me. I, I'm, I gotta go to no, Trinidad and go. Tobago. Gotta I gotta go. They Tobago. called me in. I gotta represent my country. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Proud moment. Uh, that is such an incorrect picture of me. Oh, it's the. Hey. You all are telling porkies. <laughs> I have to go look after my yacht, please. It is the end of international, <laughs> not international, international, it's the transfer window. Shuts. Oh, that's it? Shuts. It's done tomorrow, and as always, oh. we will have our finger on the pulse. <laughs> oh, remember last year with Anton Griezmann, Frank? Oh, it was all very exciting, wasn't it? We yes! were there. Yes! <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. Bringing you everything you need to know on transfer deadline day. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.